Welcome back to the expert walkthrough for Demon's Souls, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD. And we left off here in the Boletarium Palace, and we are greeted by the echoing shrieks of fire-breathing dragons. Two of them, straight out here on the other side of this door. So this is an interesting situation that you're put up against when you get to this part of the level. You walk through this door, and you see not one, but two fire-breathing dragons. The one on the left, that's blue, does not face you at all. It doesn't do any kind of fire attacks. But it does have that big nasty tail that will kill you immediately. And there's nothing you can do to survive it. You can't block it. You really can't do anything to survive that tail hit. If you come back later with significantly more health, sure. But we have 371. I reckon it probably does about a thousand damage on hit, so no chance for us. Good thing we're on soul form. I don't recommend trying to get these items in human form, because if you die, that'll screw with your tendency. And world tendency is something that I'm going to explain after the boss. So what we can do is we can go down these steps, and we can run along the, crypt, the cliffside here to not get hit by the fire. He's going to try, though. You'll see. Just give it a second. There we go. So yeah, he will try to cook you. There's some items over here that we want to get. Archstone shards take us back to the Nexus without costing us all of our souls. So it's essentially the Nexial Binding, you could call it. Right here. Transports one back to the Nexus, but you'll notice it doesn't have the relinquish all souls to return to the Nexus. The difference is that the Nexial Binding is infinite. You can use it as many times as you need. These are not reusable. You have one per use. So we just picked up two, and that'll do for now. I don't foresee us needing to make any really important emergency trips to the Nexus while we're in the middle of a level, but the game does do you this one favor by providing you such an item that'll take you back to the Nexus without costing you your souls, because this game is not like Dark Souls or Elden Ring. There's not scattered bonfires or sites of grace all over the place. You have archstones that appear only at the beginning and the end of every level. So here's how we're going to handle this part. Once you step out here, you're going to hear... I've been shot <laughs> through the side of the head. You're going to hear the dragon. You're going to hear him screeching, and you're going to know he's coming. And then you will see he'll show up here. But you need to stay here for a second. Wait for him to do the roar. There we go. And then wait for the fire. Yeah. That's the good stuff. And it cuts off right about here. So I would say keep yourself, like, down at the bottom of these steps if you want to avoid the fire. But here's what we're going to do. Oh. <laughs> Maybe a little bit further back. That was kind of funny. But what we want to do is we want to wait for him to do that fire attack. No, he flew away. See, this part's a little bit tricky. You see the general strategy that we're going for here. You probably can comprehend what it is I'm trying to go for. And what we're going to do is we're going to exploit the fire. So, let's wait for him to come back. Wait for the visual cue. I think I saw him. Just barely. There we go. Wait for the visual cue, and that's how you know to run back and go grab the items. So this is kind of a finicky process. You do not have very much time, because it takes him no time at all to get back to that perch where he breathes the fire. So this is going to take multiple attempts, but it's okay. We have plenty of time. So there's one item. Oh. Except my thumbs are still in Elden Ring mode, so... I actually didn't grab those items at all. That's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> all I do is two-hand my weapon. I'm used to triangle picking up the items because of Elden Ring, and uh, that's not how it went at all. That's pretty funny. So, let's try again. Wait for the visual cue. There he is. The problem is if you don't physically see him flying towards you in the distance, he's not going to make it all the way to the bridge. And that's a problem. So, 
to give yourself the amount of time that you need to go get these items, you really, really need to make sure that he actually leaves. So here's one. And we have just enough time to get the other one. There we go. Purple flame shield. Duck for cover. So now we're going to do it one more time. And once we get up to the item that's being guarded by the tail, that's where it gets kind of tricky. But believe it or not, you can get the item that's being guarded. It's a, a very, very good item that you want to get if you can. But it's pretty it's pretty easy to get. It's uh, You're going to be completely flabbergasted when you realize the trick to getting this item. <laughs> it's kind of silly. So for this next little sprint that we're doing, we are going to go for the stuff that's directly on the cliffside. These are a little bit less dangerous to get because we don't have to be so close to where he perches. So we can do this. We can actually just like straight roll. This one. And then duck for cover. Good stuff. So maybe we can take this opportunity to use the telescope. And I know what you're thinking, right? Like, why don't you shoot him with arrows or something from right here? No, doesn't work like that. I mean, it does. You can hit him, but it's completely unreliable. Why don't we do this, actually? Let's put it in our tool belt. So I know what you're thinking. How are we going to get those two items there? They're guarded by the tail. I'm going to show you. <laughs> it's actually quite easy. So I actually want to do an experiment here because one thing I've never really done in comparison is I've never waited to see like how much additional time you have if he's already breathing fire on the bridge. Like I wonder, do you, do you end up having extra time if he's actually roasting the bridge? We're going to test that out real quick. It'll take a little bit of extra time because we have to wait for him to get to the bridge, aggro, and start breathing fire. But... I want to see how much extra time we get, because this part is the hardest part of getting the items. You have the danger of the tail of the blue dragon that you need to watch out for. And then we also have to worry about making sure that he does not get back there before we're done looting. Alright. So let's see how much extra time that gives us. Man, no matter how many times I play this game, no matter how many times I do this part, this part always makes my hands sweaty. Like, it's bad, man. So here's all you have to do to avoid this part. It's just duck. Do you see that? That's all you gotta do. Just pick up the item and duck. <laughs> it's that simple. Because the dragon sweeps the tail in a perfectly horizontal direction. Like, it's just a, a cross sweep is all it is. That's all you gotta do. Bend over and pick up the item, and the tail will miss you completely. It's pretty silly, but... Let's take a look at what we got. The Ring of Great Strength. So this will take my equipment burden from 37 to 55 and a half. That's a lot. That's near double. This is basically the Havel's Ring of this game. And it is money. If you intend to use heavier equipment, that is a must-have for you. So here's what I'm going to do for this part. Because of the dragon posing a problem, we're just going to dodge the bolts. Backstab this guy. And get out of the way of this guy. Because we know that the dragon is coming for us. But he's not able to hit us. Once you're this far back, at least. So I want to point something out real quick. For this part, you can attack the dragon, oddly enough. Well, I missed. <laughs> I'm going to try to hit him real quick. I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want to actually show it. It's probably better if I don't lock on. See? You can hit him from here, but the thing is, once you get him to about half health, He's just going to fly away. You're not actually going to be able to finish the job here. Not in my experience, anyway.
Very cool gimmick. Been used in many a Souls game. So now we're going to pull this lever with a very aggressive grunt. And we're going to get the boss cutscene. Right. So, now that we have the boss unlocked, the gate is now open, we have access to go fight him in Complete 1-1. However, it's not that simple. We still have some hoops to go through. There's some enemies left. Just waiting to catch us off guard. This in particular is dirty. I would say bring the fight in here, 100%. Oh no. <laughs> Thought he was going to die in two hits. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a nasty pincer attack that happens as soon as you leave this room. I would say, you know, like, do this. Smack a wall or something, because the sound engine in this game is actually quite advanced. Uh, get the enemy's attention hitting the wall. Walk out there for just a split second. Get them to follow you. And bring the fight into a corridor where you can control what happens. Pine Resin. We've actually picked up quite a few of those already, just fighting our way through this level, and it's going to put fire on our weapon, which is going to be very important for this boss fight. The boss we're about to fight is the Phalanx, and it is very, very weak to fire. It's almost like the bad guys know we're weak to fire too, because they're throwing shit at us already. So this part is a little bit irritating. You've got spear and shield guys, and we've seen how annoying they are. But take it one step at a time. Let him bounce off. Oh. Well, we're in a corridor. The best thing to do... Oh. Come here. And they have begun turtle stabbing. Oh. Well, I hit him, but <laughs> was hoping to finish them both off. So for this part, again, you know, bring the fight into a place where you can control what happens. Having them bounce off your shield and then retaliating is probably the best thing you can do. I would say it's among the smartest of your options for the, the guys that had the spear and the shield, but try to get them one at a time. I would not let them pincer you. I would not let them surround you in this corridor, because once you do that, you're in trouble. But it's not over. We now have another dragling in this room. He's over here. Or, sorry, not a dragling. A human guy over here kind of hides in the corner. And you'll see one of the mechanics of being near the wall and attacking with, like, a horizontal weapon is you will bounce. And that is a very deliberate feature in this game. Like, when you are trying to attack enemies in a narrow space or near a wall, and you bounce off like that, it will leave you open to be countered. And it will seriously interrupt your opportunity to kill the enemy. So, we have more of these guys. We know how to deal with these guys, right? You've been paying attention, haven't you? Don't give them the time of day. Oh my goodness. Unless they jump at you. Alright. I don't give them the time of day at least. So. Now we're going to have a brand new enemy that we have not encountered yet. Shield up. <laughs> because they throw shit at you. Another Dragling Shield. These are Phalanxes. They suck. They got that big, thick shield on them, which... Ooh, a hardstone shard. Fantastic. That is what you want from these guys. That's their good drop, is either a hardstone shard or a sharpstone shard. You can farm these guys for those things. But this big shield that they have, interestingly enough, that shield was part of the collector's edition of this game. You have it as download content. I don't have that version of the game because... I ended up getting this game with my PlayStation 5 as a bundle deal. I got the like the bundle edition that came with Demon Souls, which unfortunately didn't come with the collector's edition. Don't know why, like, who the hell made that decision in marketing, but it is what it is. Um, regardless, you can't farm those guys to get that thing, unfortunately. You have to have the, sp the special version of the game, and... The most notable thing about this shield is that it's quite thick. It's very hard to get through. They can cause you some serious annoyance by having that shield on their face. Like, you'll bounce off, especially if you're one-handing. Let me show you. See, I'm doing, like, no damage. You want to get behind these guys, which can be a little bit irritating when they're against a wall like that. But they didn't give us any trouble that time. We got some more grass. Grass. 
And like that, we have unlocked our second shortcut in Boletaria. Look familiar? Pretty cool. This is the spear that was chucked out during the cutscene. It's still covered in slime. Let's you know that it was actually being wielded and held by the phalanx because uh, the lore suggests that the boss we're about to fight was indeed one of the great knights of King Alant. Alant. However you want to pronounce his name. That is the scraping spear. You can get that weapon. Not until much later. It's in this very same level, just the fourth portion of it. The Scraping Spear is a seriously dickbag weapon in PvP because it has a special ability that degrades the durability of your equipment. But we're going to do a little bit of cleanup real quick. And by cleanup, I mean I'm just going to equip one item. <laughs> um, the Pine Resin is great for this fight. Equip it before you go in because you are going to be attacked immediately when you get in. You should probably have your shield up for this fight, but I'm confident that I can run incredibly fast to avoid the damage, so. Fire. Fire, fire, fire. It is very, very good against these things. So, the phalanx itself is the big guy in the middle, right? This much we know. But what you want to do is you want to take the time to run through here and kind of clean these guys out to the best of your ability. They do throw shit at you. It is... Oop. That was embarrassing. <laughs> I thought I was still in my grass. Guess not. But thankfully, we can kill these guys in like one hit. Sort of. So I'm going to go heal up a little bit and use these pillars to guard their attacks. That's why they're here. But here's what else you can do is fire bombs. I'm going to get into a position where I know I'm not going to get blasted by a spear. Like right now, maybe. There we go. Check that out. Do quite a bit of damage like that. Phalanx itself is exposed. But that's a problem. You saw how that damage I just did came immediately back. That's why it's important to get rid of these things. Because the boss will continue to heal. And you don't want that. We're trying to kill him, right? So, without getting too close to this giant pile of blobs that stick you with spears... Just be patient. Run through here, aim for the backside, and just whittle them down. It's much easier than it looks. And particularly the ones that are attached to him, you want to try to get rid of last. These ones that are kind of separate, out here on their own, worry about those guys first. So now, what we can do is we can start making use of these damn firebombs that we've been stockpiling. Be careful when you use the firebomb because you do have to sit still periodically when you use it. Or for a, I shouldn't say periodically, I should say for a certain period of time, you sit still when you use the firebomb. So you are left slightly open. And don't be stingy with your pine resin. This, this fight's about damage. It's about having enough situational damage to be able to kill these things as fast as possible using their weakness, right? That's the goal. So once this guy is, like, this weak and has almost no protection, it's time to finish him. And we got some goodies. Oh, is it going to tell me what I got? Hearthstone Shard. Okay, good. I like that they did that, that little delay, because I didn't want to miss out on the, the prompt for the item I got. And you'll notice that we are now in human form again. So we have full health again. Not for long, though, because for most of this playthrough, I'm going to end up playing in soul form. Because I don't want to risk ruining any tendency events. And now is as good a time as any to talk about tendency. That is the way to 1-2. That's the next part of the level, called the Lord's Path. We're not going to go that way just yet, because we have... A lead or lead demon soul to collect. I would recommend pronouncing it lead because as you look at the other demon souls that are in this level, they seem to be associated with ores and alloys like lead, iron, silver, etc. 
So touching the arch stone again is going to take us back to the Nexus. And the one we're at right now, the Lord's Path, 1-2. We'll save that for after we do our maintenance. Because the important thing that's going to happen for us now is we're going to be able to use the giant pile of souls we have to level up and make ourselves stronger. Welcome back. The monumental awaits the above. Can never get over how dirty her feet are. That's really hilarious. <laughs> All right, so the monumental awaits the above. The monumental will explain. Okay, I'm gonna go talk to the monumental. In the meantime, please go wash your feet. Still alive? I am impressed. This is something that might interest you. The black-robed maiden of the Nexus looks after the flames. She's the morose one, with eyes sealed, compacted by wax. Uh, yeah, I, I can see her, man. She can control souls like no other. Bring her the souls of men and demons, and she will embolden your flesh and blood with their power. But beware. Do not decay into a foul beast. Now that last line that he mentions there, I always found to be quite interesting because we do want to use these souls to become stronger. I mean, hell, how many how many do we have? Like eight thousand five hundred? Yeah, we got quite a bit. We're gonna be able to get some good levels, but I always found it interesting that he says do not turn into some foul beast, which is kind of cool this is the guy that i was waiting for thank goodness he's here that's sage frakes apprentice and he is going to be very important for us we need him because of our build but she not she but the cutscene gave us a very nice visual cue as exactly where to go to get up to the monumental and as i mentioned before in the first episode this place is kind of a giant confusing labyrinth and it is mostly empty space, like there's at no point is this place going to be full of people or anything. But we are going to have NPCs here and here, here and there that show up in some of these crevices. And your first time playing through the game, I guarantee you are going to miss several important NPCs that show up here without ever giving you any kind of warning and you're not going to go up here and look in between every single pillar to check and make sure that there's no new squatters. So, I got you covered, though. I'm going to make sure that I help you find every single important NPC so you can do every quest line in this game on your first playthrough. One thing I want to point out here. There's an item right there that you can see. And then there's another one on the other side. Right down there. You can barely see it at the bottom of the screen. There's going to be some dangerous platforming involved to get those, but again, I got you covered. You got nothing to worry about. So let's go ahead and do our thing. Really doesn't matter which direction you go, left or right, doesn't matter. As long as you are ascending steps, that is how you get to the Monumental. Now there is one point where we're going to get, there we go, right down there. Um, we're going to go get that item as well on our way back down, but... The way you find the Monumental is you look for the candle that's still burning. So, no Monumental on this side. I mean, there are, but they're just dead. Here we go. The one with the candle still lit. This is going to be kind of a long dialogue. It's going to take up the rest of the episode for sure, but let's get started. We have long awaited you. Slayer of demons. I 
taken on one of the monumentals. We preserve the fabric of reality. There is a tale I wish to tell you. Once, we too were a scourge of demons faced. In the distant past, under benevolent rule, the world was united owing to the soul arts. Until a lust for power caused the awakening of the old one. Across the land seeped a colorless, deep fog, and the world faced extinction at the hands of the demons. Thanks be. We were able to lull the old one back to its slumber. Yet only after the loss of innumerable souls and most of the world lost, erased by the fog. In order to mend the fabric of what land still remained, we entrusted six leaders with six precious archstones. One to the king of a small yet industrious land. One to the king of the burrowers underground. One to the wise queen of the great ivory tower. One to the chieftain of lost and ill-fortuned souls. One to the shaman of the tempest-worshipping shadowmen. And the last to the great giants of the northern lands. The archstones were placed in the fringelands that survive. We contained the old one here below the nexus and prohibited the soul arts. Finally, we became monumentals, half living sentinels of the fabric of reality. Alas, the other monumentals have perished, and only I remain. All right, there we go. By the power of the monumental, the four sealed art stones have been unlocked. And I know what you're thinking. The math's not right. There were six, right? I'll explain that in just a second. Now it is your turn. You must lull the old one back to its slumber and seal it away for all eternity. If not, the deep fog will absorb all that we know. Have you the strength to bear this burden? Man, why is it always me that has to deal with the geriatric forces of the world? I didn't wake this thing up. But I'll help. Yes, we are fortunate indeed to have you. Now, go forth and destroy every last demon. The old one without demons to feed its souls, will a new servant seek and lure you to its bosom. Very nice. And there's your sort of good, bad, evil versus whatever kind of complex. So let's go grab this guy real quick, since it's right here. And we will end this episode leveling up. So the Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. It's a very, very good pickup. That is the item I had mentioned in a previous episode that allows you to reassume your human form without having to kill a boss. So if you are struggling to get through the game in your soul form, you just need that extra health no matter what. You gotta have it. That item is going to allow you to reclaim your human form without having to get your way all the way up to a boss and defeat it. Or reclaim your humanity like that. So, let's see. For these items in particular, I suppose I could grab these while we're here. Why not? Uh, it doesn't matter if we die here in the Nexus in human form because that is the only place you can die. 
Oh my goodness. That's usually what happens to me. <laughs> let me, uh... Let me run back up here and grab my souls real quick. While we talk about... World Tendency. Such an excellent topic. So, World Tendency, outlined in this tab, second most to the right. There's two different kinds. You have your World Tendency, which governs the tendency you have for each world. Five of them, at least. Because the sixth one, which I'm going to point out real quick, is destroyed. It's inaccessible. You can see it is literally shattered to pieces. And I want to mention something that I just noticed. In that cutscene, you will notice that in these little, like, egg-shaped slots here is where the archstones were. Perhaps those are the things that have the swords stabbed into them throughout the world that we teleport to. That just might be it. That's a cool theory. But this one's destroyed. There, no, it doesn't ever get repaired. There's nothing you can do to access it. They always speculated that it was going to be DLC or something like that. Or A lot of people really hoped that they were going to... Uh, reinstate, reconsecrate that stone so that you can access that that world of the giants, the, the northern land in this game, remade. But, alas, not the case. So let's retrieve our souls. Not going to waste any more time worrying about those items. We can always get those at the beginning of the next episode. But we're going to end this episode leveling up. And I have a very specific build in mind for this character, so I'll explain. You know what? No. I'm going out of order. I need to explain World Tendency. I just had it up. <laughs> so our World Tendency is neutral for all five worlds that we can go to. The color of the orb that looks kind of like a snake eye is what determines your Tendency. Ours right now seems to be kind of glowing white, which means that it's you know, more close to white than it is dark. But there's differences in each world depending on what your tendency is. Pure white tendency will unlock certain events. Pure black tendency will unlock certain events. Pure white tendency, your world is easier and you collect more souls from slaying enemies. Pure black tendency, your world is more difficult. It summons red phantom enemies that can be incredibly annoying and challenging to deal with. But we're going to do both. I'm going to show every single tendency event in this walkthrough. We start, typically the best way to do it is start with white and then do black afterwards. We also have, oops, character tendency. Your character tendency is a culmination of your world tendency. So pure black character tendency is easily achievable by killing NPCs and doing other rotten things that generally would make you a bad or distasteful person. Whereas pure white tendency comes from establishing better relationships with NPCs, as in talking to them, following them, completing their quest lines, giving them what they ask for, and whatever. And the most notable event that affects your character and world tendency towards the white direction is defeating bosses. The biggest thing you can do to harm your tendency and turn it to the dark side is dying in human form. These are important things we're going to have to pay attention to because it's not going to be a problem to be bosses because I'm clearly a fucking boss at this game and not going to have any issues with that. But dying in human form, that's the no-no. That's why I'm perfectly okay that I'm in soul form and I died in the Nexus here because the Nexus is the only safe place that you can die without affecting your tendency on your character or any world that you're in. So I will be doing something that is commonly referred to as suiciding in the Nexus. Um, I suppose that's not a very nice term because that's probably not a word we should use or joke about or anything, but that's just kind of what people have called it. They coined the term many years ago when this game came out, but I probably won't be referring to it as that. I'll just be calling it uh, dying in the Nexus. Like, I'll probably run all the way up there and roll off the cliff and just make it really short and simple. And I won't be playing in human form in probably any of the levels. Here and there I will, but not often because I don't want to risk dying. Anyways. Brave soul for whom death is no fear. Prithee, lull the old one back to its ancient slumber. 
Can't help but notice your feet are still dirty. All right, and then we got multiplayer items. Not of any use to us, but now we have the prompt. The maiden in black manipulates souls with inhuman prowess. Her strength allows her to aid slayers of demons. Of course I do. Of course. After all, thou requirest strength. Go ahead. Touch the demon inside me. Let these vagabond souls become thine own. Vag? That's not very nice to say. I mean, they... Alright. They were just doing their jobs. Vagabonds. Goodness. So, this character in particular, I need to get up to 12 strength because that's what I'm going to need to two-hand a particular weapon that's going to be pretty important to me. But we need health, like, so bad. So let's get ourselves up to, like, 14 vitality. That's That seems about right to me, and we should be able to level up two more times after that. Okay, good, good, good. So now what we're going to do is we are going to... Let's see, we have one slot for both magic and miracles. Our magic stat is important, but we need to get our intelligence up because you see down there where it says magic memory, this will get us up to our second spell slot, and that's pretty important. So if you're following along with me and kind of doing this build alongside me, this is the direction that I highly urge you go. I'm going to explain the reason behind my decisions here. I'm raising my vitality, because at full health, we have like 371. And raising up to 461 is important because that way, even if we're playing in soul form and we're not in human form with our entire health bar, we're still going to have significantly more health, provided we have the cling ring on, which we will. Our intelligence we're going to raise to 14 because those two extra points going from 12 to 14 will give us one additional magic memory slot that I just pointed out. Look for the red arrow. And then our strength. I'm, ch I'm changing this up to 12, not because we're going to be a strength main. I don't think the strength on this character is going to go anywhere past 12 on this entire playthrough. But we're going to be using weapons that require, I think, like 18 strength might be the, the the highest that I need, and that's going to be the Uchigatana, which is something we're going to pick up next time. But we're going to need at least 12 strength to two-hand it, and we won't be able to one-hand it at any point, but it doesn't matter, because we're going to be a Battle Mage Spellblade sort of build that is going to be highly aggressive with magic from a distance, and then able to shred things to pieces if they survive long enough to get close. That's kind of the, the gist of the build. So this is what we're going to go with for now, and we could 100% get more levels right now if we were to consume those soul items that we've been picking up, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to save those for a more situational purpose, slash rainy day. So now we're level 12 instead of level 1. I wish she said it more like the original. May thine strength help the world be mended. Something like that. Hello. Are you here to face the demons? If so, please free Sage Freight the Visionary from his cell in Latria. I will help you however I can. I can teach you elementary spells. Sage Freight is a gleaming hope for humankind, but I have not the power to save him alone. But you'll send me somebody who you think is only fit for the most elementary magic. Nice. So, this guy. I love the preview window. I love that they show you what the abilities do. They need to bring that back in Souls games. It's so cool. We already have Soul Arrow equipped, which is nice. This came with our build. Like, we already had this the minute we showed up in the tutorial, which, oddly enough, that's exactly where that clip is happening. The tutorial. Very first room. But we want to learn magic from this guy. We don't have the money for any of it. We don't have enough. But we will. 
There's some good stuff here. Flame Toss, I highly recommend you get. Enchant Weapon is good too, but the reason we're not going to get that is because we will have much better use for Flame Toss. Some of the stuff that we're going to be doing a little bit later on, fire is going to be detrimental to our success. And we're also going to get a really badass weapon that's going to give us much higher damage output than an upgraded regular weapon with this temporary enchantment on it that costs 20 mana, which is expensive. So, once we get there, we're going to do Flame Toss, but we're going to have to save that for next time. I see. Suit yourself. Just ensure that you rescue Sage Frake as quickly as possible. Yeah, I'm on it. So, we also have a new development over here. We have these folks. We have Saint Urbane here and his follower. We will converse with these folks next time, and I'm also going to buy that spell from him next time, and we're going to go back to facing the demons. But thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode of the X Walkthrough for Demon Souls. There is much to cover. I'm really, really excited to be playing this game because Demon Souls is fantastic. It's like for sure one of my favorite games of all time. But I really appreciate your guys' support. I'm glad you guys are with me on this journey. I've been your faithful host. Let's play Dark Souls HD, and I will catch all of you guys in the next video.